Elite Gaming. Hey doing guys, it's Andrew at Elite Gaming HQ and today I have a special video for you. Today's video, we're going to look at a PC build. Now I haven't done many videos like this, but I may do some in the future. One thing I want to point out is that out of all my friends, I'm the one guy that builds most of their gaming PCs. So I had a little bit of experience building it and I thought this one was awesome. But first I have to mention the PC is only going to cost $350, which puts it comparable to most consoles. It's going to come with an operating system because I really don't like how people build PCs and they don't include an operating system and they either expect you to pirate it or not use the PC. The Steam operating system is free and some people use that but it doesn't play well with a lot of games so we're going to be looking for windows and all that's in a 350 price tag another advantage in this pc build that you won't find in others is i can actually benchmark it for you because we built this very pc this was a pc i built for rpg gamer girl that being said there will be some small differences basically for her we went for a micro itx motherboard where we tried to make the smallest computer possible and also have it portable for LAN parties that's a unique feature which you guys really won't be able to get with the $350 price tag. But that aside, the computer runs games well, especially the games she wants to play. We're talking great PC games all the way down from CSGO, Skyrim, Don't Starve, Left 4 Dead, Killing Floor 2, R, Rocket League, Minecraft, and all kinds of other great games, along with being able to use mods for games that console users just can't do yet. Oh, and one more thing that's worth noting is this PC is a platform in which you can expand on in the future. A lot of PC builds are not. So when games come out in the future games that you really want to play that are highly graphically demanding you'll be able to do simple upgrades and you'll be able to play them on this pc a lot of pc builds out there you can't do that especially not for a 350 dollars price tag that comes with an os so let's check it out Okay, first let's talk about power supply. I mean, you're gonna need a good solid power supply, especially if you wanna upgrade in the future. So, so my recommendation is to go with the EVGA 80 plus bronze 500 watt. Basically with it being 80 plus bronze, you're not gonna waste a lot of power. And also you have 500 watts. So later when you wanna upgrade your graphics card, you have plenty of room to do so. This build overall will not use a lot of power. So you're not gonna be sucking a lot out of the wall. But when it's time that you need it, it'll be there for you. So the EVGA 500. All right, next is our motherboard. We have the Asus A68HME. It's a FM2 Plus motherboard, which supports Athlon and A-Series FM2 Plus socket processors. It's a pretty solid motherboard overall, or Asus, however you like to say it. I feel like they make great motherboards. I've used them in the past and I had great reliability with them. And also one thing to note about this motherboard is you can overclock the motherboard to work with 2400 RAM, or simply you could use 2133 megahertz RAM, and the motherboard will still allow you to use it at 20 400 speed that's going to be very important for the next thing coming up all right so here's the combination that's going to get your games going we have the amd apu a10 7870k got very now this is a four core processor it also includes radeon r7 graphics processing now this is one reason besides the fact of us getting a great price on a lot of these parts why the build is so cheap because with this apu you're not going to need a graphics card as long as you do the ram right now the apu is going to take about a gig or so of your ram and it's going to use it to make graphics processing which works amazingly i mean some games that work so much better than others like battlefield 3 comes out great csgo great it works really well i'm very surprised could you imagine playing skyrim or fallout 4 without a graphics card yeah my girlfriend was playing fallout 4 with no graphics card coupled with that you need good ram you need fast ram so we got the corsair vengeance 16 gigabyte now you can change the color i think hers was red i'm not really sure i have to look back in the picture but corsair makes great products and this ram is a proper speed now please don't go with eight gigs you're like why are you going to spend 60 dollars for 16 gigs well first off if you go with eight gigs one of your gigs is going right off the bat to your graphics processing number two 16 gigs is a good bit of ram that you're not going to need to upgrade in any near future short of rendering videos 16 gigs is all you're going to need for a very long time in games to come now later on at some point you can just throw a graphics card in this pc and it's going to run into future games and you're not going to need to upgrade the ram and you'll still be pushed by four cores all right, so next we have to look at storage. Now this one is gonna be up to you guys. You really have to make a decision here. And you have to think of what your application is. For this price point, you can get a 500 gigabyte mechanical Western digital drive, which is not bad. They're a pretty reliable company. Or you can get an SSD, but only 120 gigabyte, which is great for booting speeds. And it's great for some of your more modern games that need to load whole environments or MMOs. But the issue is at this price point, are you gonna fill up the space on an SSD? So then you go with the mechanical 
Google Drive. For me personally, I love SSDs. And USA Premiere, I personally have the 120 and the 240 gigabyte. And my girlfriend has the Kingston 120 and 240 gigabyte. So between the two of us, we have four SSDs and we love them. And as far as storage drives, I go with a mechanical drive, like four terabyte Western Digital. But it's really up to you. Now, if you could scrounge the extra 20 or $30, then maybe you can get a 240 gigabyte SSD. Or you can do like I did. You can start with a 120 for a boot drive, then later on, put all your games on a 240 and just boot games off the 240. There's just something awesome about pressing your PC button and it booting right up immediately because of an SSD. But at this great price, you really can't have a huge hard drive. So I leave this decision to you guys. Either one's a pretty good choice. All right, so now let's talk OS. Now you can go to kingquin.com and you can either pick up Windows 7 Professional or Windows 10 and still be within your budget of the $350. Now the Windows 7 OEM is only $22. Some people prefer Windows 7, but I highly recommend going 10. So what I would suggest doing is buy the Professional 7, installing it, and then upgrading to 10 for free while you still can. If you're past the July mark, or which date it was that you are unable to upgrade for free, then go with the 10 and spend the 8 more or 10 more dollars. The reason being, Windows 10 DirectX 12 is going to be great use of multi-core processors in the future when games start to mold themselves around it. So I would suggest the end game is to end up with 10. Kinkwin.com is a great place to get good software like this. Now, in case you're worried about it being a shady site, we did use this site and we do got a working OS and we had no problem. Now, the OEM key basically means that you're building the computer yourself and they're not going to give you much support, but that's all on you anyway. Because at this point, you're the builder of your PC, there's no other manufacturer. Now, the last thing you're going to need is a case, and I found these two very affordable cases for $30 that are micro ATX mini towers, which is exactly your motherboard, so it'll fit right in there the core 1000 has a little fan on the front and you could spend the extra couple bucks that you had left over from your 350 build price to put a led fan in the front of this pc and it would look great but either one of these is good cases and really the case is up to you and how much you want to spend i was just giving you some options here but one thing i highly do not recommend is do not think you're saving a buck by buying a pc case that comes with a power supply don't do it they're terrible they're bad they will blow up they will hurt your computer components. The power supply in this build, the EVGA, is a great power supply and just please don't do that. Just spend the extra money to get the power supply and then get yourself a decent case for 30 bucks, maybe a little more. It's worth it. Trust me guys. Alright, so I think this video is going on about long enough but I promised you guys some benchmarks. Well, I will do a part two and I will benchmark some games with this very processor build and you will get to see how well it works. That way you can decide to yourself if you want to take on this build or not. But down the line, you can throw a graphics card in and more hard drive and this computer will be a great gaming PC in the future as well. So I'll put the link to the next video in the description if I've already made it. I'll put a little annotation up here. Thanks for watching guys. This is Andrew at Elite Gaming HQ. Thanks.